Hi everyone and welcome to another day at the Elemental Workshop. Today we're going to be making some ferric chloride with some pretty easy to obtain products from the store and then we're going to be using it to etch some steel. To get started we're just going to need some hydrogen peroxide, hydrochloric or muriatic acid, and a source of iron to dissolve. I'll be using this fine steel wool, but nails or steel scraps will work just as fine. It just might take a little bit longer to dissolve in the acid if you use those. Then we'll also need a container to hold the reactant and uh, everything in it. And for that I'm just going to be using this glass vase since the glass won't react with anything that we're going to be using today. To get started we're just going to put some of our steel wool into the vase. And as I do that, I'm just going to kind of fluff up the steel wool so that it hopefully makes it easier for the acid to get to all of it later. It's also important to note that while the gloves may not be super important for this step, you should definitely be wearing them for everything you do after this point. Next we'll be adding our hydrochloric acid and we're pretty much just going to add enough to cover all the steel wool. As the acid reacts with the iron in the steel wool, it will form iron 2 chloride, which isn't quite our end product yet, but it is pretty close. You can see right now that there is a lot of gas being produced in this reaction. And that's the hydrogen that is being put off as a byproduct of this reaction. This actually wasn't enough still wool for the amount of hydrochloric acid that we used. Uh, so I needed to add some more later, but I don't have the footage for that. Especially when you're going to be using this to etch steel in particular, it's important that you don't have excess hydrochloric acid in your end product. So you may have to add more steel into the solution to use up the rest of that acid. To tell whether or not you've used up all the hydrochloric acid in the solution, add a little bit of steel wool or steel to the solution, and if it doesn't create any bubbles, then you can tell that it's pretty much fully reacted. It's a somewhat slow process to dissolve even this fine steel wool, so I let it sit for several hours until it all dissolved. The time needed for all the steel to dissolve will be even longer if you used larger pieces of steel, such as nails. For the final step, we are going to add our 3% hydrogen peroxide into the solution, and this will oxidize our iron 2 chloride into iron 3 chloride, thus giving us our end product. At this point, I really need to stress that you do not add the peroxide to the solution the same way I did. Dumping it all at once can be very dangerous, as the oxidation process it causes the solution to undergo releases a lot of heat, and it can cause your container to break or melt and spill hot acid all over the place. This was a really stupid mistake for me to make, and I was really lucky that nothing bad happened. Instead, you should add the hydrogen peroxide slowly and stir it with a glass rod or something else that won't react with the acid. And if the temperature of the container ever gets hot to the touch, stop and wait for it to cool down before you continue. Now that the peroxide has reacted, we are ready to use our ferric chloride to etch some steel. To demonstrate, I'm going to be etching this knife that I made a few weeks ago. Generally, it's not a very good idea to etch a fully finished knife. You should probably etch the knife right before you add the handle and then you can etch the full length of the steel. But I didn't have any blanks laying around so I'm just going to tape off the handle so the acid doesn't get to it and then we can etch just the blade. Before we etch the blade we're going to need to clean off the steel to make sure that there's no oils or anything that would keep the ferric chloride from reacting with it. First, I'm going to scrub it with some steel wool to get off any oxides that may have formed on the surface. Once that's done, I generally clean it off with acetone as that's the best at getting off the oils. But I'm not at my shop right now and I wasn't able to find any acetone here. Uh, so I'm just going to try some 91% isopropyl alcohol and hopefully that does the job. 
Now we just need to let it sit in the solution for a little bit to get the etch done. To do this, I'm just going to wrap a little bit of wire around the handle and use that wire to suspend the knife over the container. We want it so just the blade gets in the ferric chloride and the handle stays out as much as it can. So it turns out the isopropyl alcohol wasn't quite enough to clean this steel well enough to get an even etch over everything. So I had to go back and I eventually found some acetone that I was able to clean off the blade. And after that, the etch took pretty well. The lighting's a little bad, so you can't see it very well, but here's what the knife looks like after the etch. And I generally really like how this looks on the knives, but on this one in particular, I think I might have liked it a little bit more without the etching done. So I may actually go in after and just resand this down, but for the sake of demonstration, this should work just fine. Well, I'd just like to say thanks to all of you again for joining me, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks!